Turbix pumps and power, the number one place in South Africa to meet all your renewable energy needs. Today we are looking at how to install your new Turbix solar pump. This instruction article will help you to set up a fully functional solar water pumping system. The installation has two parts. One part is the installation of the submersible pump and the other part the connecting of the solar panels. Submersible pumps are long, thin, cylindrical in shape borehole pumps that sit inside a borehole. Remember, never run the pump dry. Before starting the pump up, let it sit in the water for at least 10 minutes so that the water can lubricate the rubber. For lightning, be sure to place your supply cable in a galvanized pipe between your borehole and the control box. The rope must never be tied to the pipe. Always tie it to the provided hole on the actual submersible pump motor. The controller must never be in direct sunlight. Either put it underneath the solar panels or inside a well-ventilated box. If you are using your own panels, please contact our technical department to make sure the panels match the required maximum open current voltage. Never close the output water pipe with a valve. Be aware that water pipes can freeze in winter time. A submersible pump cannot work against pressure and will be damaged if working against a closed valve or ice in the pipe. This could even burn out the control box. For the higher head solar pump option, you will be using an AC pump and a dedicated pump inverter. Once the solar panels are connected, you can switch your pump inverter on the lights will come on and after about 50 seconds the pump will start running. And there it starts running. Step 1. Determine how deep you will be installing your solar pump. We recommend no deeper than 30 meters below your static water level and at least 2 meters to 6 meters above the bottom of your borehole to ensure no sand gets into the motor. Step 2. Check what is inside the box. A. Inside you have a pump. B. Next you have a controller. This is the intelligent part of the system that will protect your motor. C. Next you have two water cable sensors. One is for the well and the other is for the tank or reservoir. D. You have a 6 meter cable to connect your controller to your solar module panel. E. You have an extra spare helical rotor for the pump. F. Heat shrink, which you will probably not use. Step 3. Check that you have everything you need, including items not included with your pump. A. Submersible cable to connect your pump to the controller box. 4mm submersible cable for installations up to 50m. 6mm submersible cable for deeper installations. B. Sensor cable for pump protection. C. A rope to hang the pump on. Preferably poly polypropylene 3 8 inch rope. D. Solar panel cable for your panels to be connected to the control box. E. A splice or waterproof cast for your waterproof pump connection. F. A base plate for the top of your well or borehole to secure your pump. G. A male HDP fitting for your pump and pipe connection. H. Stockings to act as a filter to prevent dirt from coming into your pump. Step 4. Assemble the pump. A. The nylon stocking must be pulled over the pump from the bottom upwards. Secure it at the top with a cable tie. B. Screw the male fitting into the top section of the submersible pump. Connect the pipe to the fitting. Make sure that your pipe goes all the way into the fitting and tighten it properly. C. Secure the sensor above the pump and tighten it with cable ties just above the fitting. Depending on the strength of your borehole, you may want to install the sensor 2 to 5 meters above the pump so that the pump can switch off before the well runs dry. D. Tie the rope to the provided hole on the pump. E. Insert the pump into the provided sleeve. The sleeve is there to protect the pump from dirt and also eliminate turbulence. F. If you have aggressive water or red water in your borehole, add an anode over the wet end of the pump to protect your pump. Step 5. Connect the cables. A. Make sure your submersible cable is long enough to cover the distance from the bottom of your well to the control box with a bit extra to spare. You never want any tension on your submersible cable. 
B. To connect the cable, you need crimping connectors, pliers, a screwdriver, and a crimping tool. C. Loosen up the wire from the pump and notice that you have three wires to connect. Black, blue, brown. Insert the crimping connectors and secure them properly. D. Now to connect the wires. Connect the black from the pump to the red in the submersible cable. Connect blue to blue on the second one. Connect brown to yellow on the third wire. Make sure the wires are firmly connected by testing them. Next insert the connection into your splice for your waterproof pump connection and follow the waterproof cast instruction. Note on soldering. Properly crimped connectors work fine at first, but they are susceptible to corrosion over the years. Soldering these connections makes good sense. For all the time it takes to solder, it's quick insurance. Step 6. Connect the pump and cable to the base plate. Make sure all the tension is on the rope and not on the cables or pipe. A note on protecting the submersible pump cable. In most instances, when a client's pump stops working, we find that the motor is still working fine, but the insulation on the pump cables gets worn from movement against the inside of the metal well casing. Every time the pump stops and starts as it hangs off the end of a 20 meter, 50 meter, or even a 100 meter pipe, the whole installation moves in response to the torque of the motor. Stop, start, rub, rub. After years of this action, the wire insulation wears thin, exposing bare copper and creating a short circuit that prevents the pump from running. The image here shows what typical worn wires look like in a submersible pump. Although it's not common practice, some farmers prefer to protect submersible pump wires inside a run of 20 mm diameter black polyethylene pipe running down alongside the main pipe and strapped to it with plastic tie wraps. Step 7. Insert the pump into the well. A. First determine where you want to install the wall sensor. We recommend between 2 to 5 meter above the pump cable tied to the pipe. Use electrical tape to first secure the sensor and then cable tie the level sensor. Make sure there is no dust or sand particles on the breather holes of the sensor. If you cable tie the sensor too tightly, you can damage the sensor so that it bends. B. As you insert the pump, cable tie the electrical cable to the pipe every 3 meters. Do not put any tension on the electrical cables. Make sure the rope remains loose. Always take caution to protect the cable. Step 8. Connect the pump to the controller. First we will connect the solar panels to the controller and thereafter the pump to the controller. Thereafter we will connect the sensors. Make sure the control box is in the off position. You can find the switch at the bottom left between the battery and solar port on the circuit board. A. Secure the control box underneath the solar panels or in a well ventilated box. B. Make sure the cable running from the pump to the box is inside a pipe or trunking. For lightning protection, put the cable in a galvanized pipe. C. Open the lid. D. Connect the solar panels module. Make sure you do not short circuit the two wires from the solar panel modules as it will damage the panels and cables. Therefore, tape enough electrical tape over the ends before pushing the cable through the controller porthole at the bottom of the box. Connect P negative to panel negative cable, blue wire. Connect P positive to panel positive cable, black wire. B positive and B negative are for batteries. E. Connect the submersible pump cable. Connect 1 to red. Connect 2 to blue. Connect 3 to green or yellow. F. Connect the sensor from the submersible pump. The color does not matter. Connect COM1 and WH to the reservoir cable. WH stands for well high. Do not use the WL connection. G. Connect the sensor from the reservoir tank. The color does not matter. Connect COM2 and TH to the reservoir cable. Step 9. Set the control box. A. Set the speed gauge. It regulates the flow rate. We usually set that at full. 
B. Set the timer. When the borehole water is low, it will switch off your pump. The timer is the amount of time set before it tries to run the pump again. We usually set it at 30 minutes. C. Switch on the control box, left bottom of panel. All the lights will come on and then only the SYS light will glow, indicating that there is indeed power coming from the panels. A few seconds later, the second light, pump, will come on, indicating that the pump is starting to pump. The pump will start up with a slow start-up sequence. That is a protection mechanism built into the control box. The MPPT light indicates that there is enough power for the pump to run. And that is how you install your solar pump. We recommend you watch this video at least three times to ensure full understanding of all the steps. Remember, we have a three-year warranty. Don't hesitate to contact our offices on 071-397-9042 for further assistance and to purchase more great Turbex products. You can also visit our website at www.turbextrading.co.za for a step-by-step -step explanation with pictures on how to install your solar pump.